Please pray with me. God, our Father in heaven, all praise and thanks to you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit that you provided on that Pentecost when the disciples were able to proclaim the message of Christ and his love and forgiveness to those who were gathered in Jerusalem at that time. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to pour out your Spirit even on your church today, that we might indeed be that gospel light in the world that shines and draws people from all nations and people and tribes and languages into your church, that they too might be saved. Open our hearts and pour out your Spirit into our hearts now, that we might hear your word, that it might take root within us and bear good fruit for you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. In the name of Christ, dear Christian friends, grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A native from a mountain, a remote mountain village, had the opportunity to visit a large modern city for the first time. He could not bring much home with him, and he had very little money. But he was amazed at the electric lights, which he saw everywhere. So he bought a sack full of electric light bulbs and sockets with switches to turn them on and off. Arriving home, he hung the light bulbs in front of his home and on his and his neighbor's trees. Everyone watched him with curiosity and asked him what he was doing. But he just smiled at them and he said, just wait until dark, you'll see. When nighttime came, he turned on the switches. But nothing happened. No one had told him about electricity. He did not know that the light bulbs were useless unless they were connected to the power source. Spiritually, you and I also need to be connected to the power source. Luther expresses that in his explanation of the third article. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. Our power source is the Holy Spirit working through God's powerful, saving word. The Holy Spirit working through God's powerful, saving word pours great blessings upon us and also into us. God's word works. God had promised to his people that he would pour out his spirit. In today's Old Testament reading, Ezekiel had a vision of a valley of very dry bones. The very dry bones were a picture of the deadness of Israel, both as a nation and also as spiritually in their relationship with God. As a nation, they were very dead. They had been conquered by the Babylonians and taken into exile. The nation of Israel no longer existed. Spiritually, Ezekiel tells us that the people of Israel complained about the fact that they had lost hope. They had been unfaithful to God, and now they were experiencing the consequences of their unfaithfulness, their unbelief, and also their idolatry. Then God told Ezekiel in the vision to prophesy to the bones to hear the word of the Lord. As he prophesied to the bones, they came together, and sinews and flesh came upon them, and skin even covered them. But there was still no life in them. So God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath to come, that the bodies that had come together would now live. As Ezekiel prophesied, breath came into the bodies and they lived. This vision that Ezekiel records for us also points beyond the people of Israel and the nation of Israel to us today. When God said, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, he was spe speaking of raising a spirit-filled people from all nations 
who once were dead in trespasses and sins, but were now made alive in Christ Jesus. God's word works. Jesus had also prophesied to his disciples, or promised his disciples, that the Father would send them the Holy Spirit. He told them, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. In today's Gospel reading, we hear Jesus say, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. God, prom God fulfilled his promise of pouring out his Spirit on the day of Pentecost, as recorded in today's second reading. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. After Peter's Pentecost sermon, the people were cut to the heart, and they were asking, what should we do? Peter told them to repent and to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. The events of Pentecost closed with Luke recording these words. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. God's word works. And God continues to keep his promise to pour out his spirit. The Holy Spirit works mightily through God's saving word to change people and their hearts. The wind of the Holy Spirit blows, and God's word works as God's law convicts sin-hardened hearts. Just as God's word worked on the hearts of the people on Pentecost, so also God's powerful word has convicted our hardened hearts of our own sin. What sin or sins trouble you? Have you been proud or arrogant? Have you tried to resolve differences with others with anger and angry words and mean words? Have you lusted and spent time on pornography sites on the internet? Have you been disrespectful of your parents or anyone in authority? Have you coveted and been greedy? Have you gossiped, spread rumors, or told lies about others? Have you ignored the needs of people whom you could have helped? God's powerful word convinces us that we are indeed guilty before God. God's word tells us that we are spiritually lifeless and dead, just like the seed that many have planted into the soil of the fields and in the ground of our gardens. But once placed into the soil, the seeds seem to come to life. So also the Holy Spirit brings us to new and unending spiritual life through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. God's word works. The wind of the Holy Spirit and God's word works as God's gospel saves those who call upon the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit works mightily through the preaching of the word of the cross on which the Lord of glory died to suffer the punishment of our sin and to cleanse us from sin through the shedding of his blood. Paul teaches us, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The Holy Spirit works mightily through the powerful, saving word in the waters of baptism. The wind of the Spirit blows, and God's word works in baptism to create faith within us, to adopt us as God's own beloved and precious children, and to unite us with Jesus Christ in faith. The fact that we are here today, worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ, is clear evidence that God's word in baptism works. The wind of the Holy Spirit blows and God's Word works mightily to also sustain our faith through the mountains and the valleys, the joys and the sorrows of, of life, so that we may receive the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. 
The wind of the Holy Spirit blows, and God's Word works each time we open our Bible and read it. The wind of the Holy Spirit blows, and God's Word works as we worship, confess our sins, and hear the pastor absolve us of our sins in the name of Jesus Christ. God's Word works each time we open our ears to hear the proclamation of His Word. God's Word works each time we open our mouths to receive Christ's body and blood in the sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins. God's Word works each time a parent takes a son or daughter in his arm and shares the wisdom of God's grace and truth in Jesus Christ. God's Word works each time we share a promise from God's Word with someone who is experiencing a heartache, a trial. The Holy Spirit works mightily through God's powerful saving word as he moves us also to confess our faith in Christ in our everyday lives with people with whom we come into contact. The wind of the Spirit blows to show us a vision of a world that is desperately in need of the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit helps us to see others as God sees them, those whom he created and loves and wants to save. He has called us out of the world here into his house in order that he might cleanse us of our sin and to pour out his gifts into our lives. But then he sends us right back out into the world once again to be a stepping stone for others on the path that leads to salvation. The wind of the Spirit blows and God's Word works to overcome our fears, to release our tongues, and to give us the words to speak of the mighty works of God in Christ. The wind of the Spirit blows to overcome our lack of trust and to release us to dream of mission possibilities without worrying about the cost. The wind of the Spirit blows when God's Word is understood as it is confessed by believers. The wind of the Spirit blows when he enables people to call on the name of the Lord and to be saved. God's word works. So don't lose heart. Don't stop sharing God's powerful, saving word so that the Holy Spirit can do his work. God has promised us, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to be empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God has connected us to the true power source, the Holy Spirit working through God's powerful word. The Holy Spirit directs us to the Word of Christ, who came to save those of every people, tribe, nation, and language through the forgiveness that He won for us in His suffering, death, and resurrection. The Holy Spirit invites us to join Him boldly in His work so that all may call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And God's Word works. Amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Please stand.